Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the day that many wondered when it would ever arrive. And here it is, beautiful day to be here for a groundbreaking on the final section of Route 35, a day worth celebrating. Again, good afternoon. Indeed. I'm Randy Dameron with the West Virginia Department of Transportation. I'll be your MC uh, this afternoon for the next few minutes, introducing our distinguished guest here on stage. As we begin our ceremony, I'd like to ask any veterans in the audience to please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask that you now stand and join our veterans by standing for our national anthem and remain standing for a moment of to reflect on our blessings today. It's a pleasure to introduce a division of highways employee to sing our national anthem. This is Aaron Gillespie. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Thank you, Aaron. Well, our first speaker today is a very important partner in West Virginia road building. He is the West Virginia Administrator for the Federal Highway Administration. Please welcome Mr. Tom Smith. Thank you, Randy. Governor Tomlin, Senator Capito, Congressman Jenkins, Secretary Maddox, and other honored guests. Truly is an honor for Federal Highway to be a part of your celebration today. It's a great day and a great project. What a wonderful day to be out here turning dirt on Route 35. For those of you that don't know, Federal Highway is a part of USDOT. We bring back about $425 million of your federal gas tax and hand that off to the West Virginia DOT. The hardworking <coughs> men and women of the West Virginia DOT then in turn let the contracts and get the work going on projects like Route 35. I like to say a project like Route 35 takes a lot of PEP, P-E-P. -E the first P stands for partnership, the E stands for, for en enthusiasm, and the final P for persistence. Partnership uh, certainly with Secretary Maddox and West Virginia DOT, but I also like to recognize the consultants that des help design the work and, and the contractor BZAC that will be building the project. It takes partnership not only at the working level with engineers and contractors, but with you all, the locals. The E stands for enthusiasm. I have lived in West Virginia now for 16 years and live in Taze Valley, so I've seen the enthusiasm for this project and the fact that many of you local folks have the vision of what West Virginia route or what US 35 can do when it comes to jobs, when it comes to development, when it, when it comes to safety. So again, that long-term vision and keeping the enthusiasm up for the project, and I appreciate what you all have done there. And finally, the, the final P is for persistence. Um, I said I've lived here for 16 years. A West Virginia trait that I've really come to value is the persistence. It's harder to get things done in the mountains. It's particularly harder to build roads in the mountains, and you've got to stay on the job day in, day out till you get the job done. Well, it looks like we're close to that now with, with this work today. Thank Govern I would like to thank Governor Tomlin and Secretary Maddox for the willingness to be innovative with the financing here, too. They've used the public-private partnership concept 
uh, to advance the schedule. Final thing I'd like to do is recognize our field engineer, Ms. Yvonne Smith, who's out in the audience somewhere back there. Uh, she's been working on this project from start to finish with the, the folks at West Virginia DOT, so thank you, Yvonne. And with that, I'm going to say again, congratulations to all of you for this day, and thanks for letting Federal Highway be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Our next speaker is here representing 2nd District Congressman, the Honorable Alex Mooney. Please welcome to the podium uh, his district uh, representative, Mr. Fred Joseph. Uh, Senator Capito, Governor Tomlin, and all distinguished guests, uh, the Congressman sends his regrets that he can't be with you on this auspicious occasion and uh, wishes you the best and thanks you for all you've done. But he does send the message forward and he says, as your United States Representative for West Virginia's 2nd Congressional District, I would like to offer my congratulations on the groundbreaking for the completion of Route 35. This is an exciting day <coughs> for Putnam County and the entire Kanawha Valley. The project is important to many West Virginians who travel this corridor each day, and I look forward to its completion. Like many West Virginians, I believe that reliable and safe infrastructure is a pillar of robust economy. I believe that this project and its funding mechanism can become the model for our state to ensure that projects are not delayed by bureaucracies in Washington, D.C. There are many road projects throughout the second congressional district that need to be improved or completed. And I look forward to continuing to work with the colleagues at the state and federal levels to ensure that the projects get done in a timely manner. I remain committed to finding a long-term solution to finding our highways and addressing the serious waste fund found in our federal programs without raising taxes. Again, I would like to offer my congratulations on the groundbreaking for the final phase of Route 35. Thank you, Congressman Alex Mooney. Thank you, Fred. Our next speaker, first time on our highway stage in his new role. With remarks, please welcome Third District Congressman, the Honorable Evan Jenkins. I wasn't sure where he was going to go with that. We've, uh, we've cut a lot of ribbons, and uh, we've paved a lot of roads and built a lot of roads. I served in the uh, West Virginia legislature for 18 years. And uh, from Cabell County, I'm honored to represent the third congressional district, and that includes Mason County. The point, the point, Mason County, this is a long-awaited day in coming. And I hope I'm not going to get in trouble for having jumped ahead of the program. But as I look, and uh, you know, I'm in this new capacity of uh, representing the 3rd Congressional District in 18 counties, but having served 18 years in the legislature, I'm looking at the folks at the front lines, the front row here today, who have put their blood, sweat, and tear, their advocacy, they've worn me out, they've worn the governor out, they've worn the congressional delegation, and Tom, if you don't mind, I would like all of the state delegates, senators, Senator Lanham, pl please stand up, turn around, take a bow. So many have done so much to bring this day to a reality. Tragically, some people have actually uh, died. Uh, waiting for this day to come. Uh, I took, uh, very soon after becoming a congressman, I did the run from Point Pleasant down here to I-64 in, uh, uh, in an 18-wheeler rig. And I tell you, it's a different perspective. And the day we did an over-the-road ride in a truck was a day that there was also a tractor-trailer crash. It was a just an indelible reminder of how dangerous Route 35 is, has been, and today is a critically important step. Thank you, Governor Tomlin. Thank you to our Department of Transportation, Secretary Maddox, and others. You know, I know they have a tough job. I know they deal with limited budgets. I know they have to make priorities. And today, we celebrate the completion of Route 35 is a priority in West Virginia and is going to get done. 
So we thank you all very much. To my dear friend, Senator Capito, uh, she is a leader in the United States Senate. To her credit and to our delegation's credit, they have put forth a plan for a five or six year funding mechanism for highway funding moving forward. We must have a fully funded transportation bill. Just this year alone, we have put $52 billion to shore up the Highway Trust Fund. That's a small down payment to make sure current projects stay online and keep moving forward. But we need a long-term solution. Senator Capito, thank you for your leadership in pushing for a long-term solution. I am a partner with you. I know Congressman Mooney and McKinley are as well. So it's a great day for Mason County and Putnam County. It's a great day for West Virginia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman. Our next speaker has a long history supporting Route 35. When she was representing us in Congress, her efforts were critical in providing some funding toward the project. And now she represents us in the United States Senate. Please welcome the Honorable Shelley Moore Capito. Thank you, Randy, and thank all of you for being here today. Uh, Governor Tomlin, thank you for setting the priority that many of us have felt for many years in your administration to complete Route 35. It will not be forgotten by many of us. And I want to thank your secretary, Secretary Maddox. We've talked about this how many times, Paul? I mean, hundreds of times we've talked about this. And I was recounting as I was coming over here all of the different iterations of my flyover, drive over. I was in the construction truck. We went over in the helicopter. We rode in a truck like Evan did, which really was very helpful. Was anybody at the rally that we had over in Mason County in 2001 with then Congressman Ted Strickland? Yes, we were there then. To talk about the importance of Route 35, not just for this area, but really for the whole commerce to flow from down through Ohio into West Virginia. But when Tom Smith, and thank you, Tom, for what you've done, he's been really great working with me in our office all the time through my service and continues to be. But when Tom talked about PEP and he talked about persistence and he talked about the most persistence, I couldn't believe he didn't say Charles Lanham right after persistence. He is Mr. Persistence. If I was going to be down in a parade in, Put in, in Point Pleasant, if I was going to be uh, in the state capitol, or if Charles was coming over to visit me in Washington, he goes, now, Shelley, I just want to ask you one little quick question here and pin me down on Route 35. So, Charles, really, with you and with Jack Fruth and his dedicated leadership, this would never have happened. So, again, thank you for being not just the persistent person that you are, but just for being the person that you are. So this is, thank you so much. You know, it all started for me when I first came in. Remember, we had earmarks. And I was on the transportation uh, committee, and I had the opportunity to earmark dollars. And I decided, after looking at the 18 counties that I was representing, that there was no higher pro uh, priority than Route 35, not just for the business and economic standpoint, but the safety, the school buses, the residents who live in and around the area. And I was able, in the good old days of earmarks, to earmark quite a bit. Paul Maddox is wishing those earmarks would come back. Uh, and sometimes I wish the same thing. So whether it's been stops and starts, uh, the journey's been great. Uh, it's been a lot of dedicated people, and I appreciate it. Um, Congressman Jenkins, who now has my beloved, I'm calling it my, Mason County, because I had Mason County for many, many years, now has Mason County. Um, he knows, and he knows, I, I think the way he emphasized a long-term high, highway pr um, bill is absolutely essential. For them to be able to plan, for Tom Smith and Secretary Maddox, and for the governor to be able to prioritize, he's got to know what kind of funding he's going to have for five and six years. These are large, expensive projects that grow larger and more expensive every day. We did our part in the Senate, as Evan said, and we're pressing the House to do the same thing so we can come with a project where we can not only see projects like this, 
but others like the Coalfields Express, Kinko Highway, Quarter H, another one that was in my second district for a long time. We have a lot of projects in West Virginia still yet to be done, but today it's about celebrating the ones that we're going to see completion. I'm extremely, ex I, I can't even ex tell you how ecstatic I am about this. That sounds so corny, but because it's a road, but it's just more about the pulling together, partnerships, working hard, never giving up, and saying, well, it didn't work this time, but maybe it'll work next time. And that's what you all did, and that's what we've done. So thank you all very much for letting me be a part of today. Thank you, Senator Capito. Our next speaker is representing the longtime supporter of Route 35, the Honorable United States Senator Joe Manchin. Please welcome Mr. Chris Childs. Hello, good afternoon. Anyone who knows Senator Manchin knows how badly he wants to be here today. Um, he just, we had a prior commitment, he wasn't able to be here, but he did want me to tell you how excited he was. He's over the moon about this. As your governor, then as your senator, this is an issue he's been working on for, for well over a decade, uh, and he's excited to work with, with everyone up here on the stage for the completion of, of Route 35. Um, just to you know, quickly echo, uh, I think, what Congressman Jenkins and Senator Capto said about the, the, the highway transportation bill. And really, it's all about government being your ally and not your adversary in issues like this. And that's really what Senator Manchin's core beliefs are and what he's working so hard uh, in, in D.C. to try to accomplish. Uh, with your permission, I have just a short little greeting from him I'd like to read now. On behalf of the citizens of the Mountain State, and as your United States Senator, it's my privilege to extend greetings to those attending the groundbreaking for completion of Route 35. Transportation and infrastructure are vital to the Mountain State, and I've, as I've said many times, if we expect to be able to attract new businesses and keep our existing businesses and communities healthy, we must provide the basic services they need to operate. At the foremost of those needs is providing safe roadways as well as maintenance for our current infrastructure. This vision for US 35 has been a priority for many years, and during my time as governor is one of the top roads in the state that needed to be developed, and I'm proud to see the years of planning finally come to fruition. This project will be a great asset to the citizens of Putnam and Mason County, not only because it will be safer for travelers, but because it will bring greater economic opportunities to the region. Again, I thank Governor Tomlin, Senator Lanham, the Fruth family, Putnam, Mason County officials, and all those who made this project a reality, including my good friends Senator Capito and Congressman Jenkins. Please accept my best wishes for the future. With warmest regards, Joe Manchin III, United States Senator. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Chris. Well, our next speaker is the Secretary of the West Virginia Department of Transportation, as well as the Commissioner of the Division of Highways. If you ask him his favorite road in the state, <laughs> it's Route 35. If you ask him his favorite road project in the state, it's Route 35. In fact, he was a project engineer on a bridge north of here in Mason County on the first section of U.S. Route 35. Please welcome the Secretary of Transportation, Mr. Paul Maddox. Thank you, Andy, and good afternoon. I want to welcome and thank you for joining us today to celebrate the groundbreaking for the last section of U.S. 35. This project has been decades in the making. And I remember early on as commissioner Mr. John Musgrave invited me for a meeting in Point Pleasant. And at that meeting were the advocates for US 35, Jack Fruth and Charlie Lanham, Senator Lanham. And they told me they had the opportunity to listen to them and to learn the merits of why the upgrade of US 35 was so important for not only the region but also the nation. This highway was so important that we, they talked us and we, the merits of it, it was put into the six year program that we started back in 2005. This highway stretches 412 miles from Michigan City, Indiana to Scott Depot, West Virginia. And having this last section under contract to BZAC is the next and final step in completing US 35. So we're excited to be closer to providing a safe 
efficient, continuous four-lane route through Mason and Putnam counties. But we would not be here today without the support of our elected leaders. Governor Tomlin, Senators Capito and Manchin, Tom Smith, our Federal Highway Administrator, and his staff. Congressman Jenkins and Moody. They have been steadfast partners with us in making this project become a reality. And also the various resource agencies and the staff of the Division of Highways, who are the true assets of the state of West Virginia. I want to thank all of you for your dedication to the citizens of the Mountain State. This project is yet another example of how public-private partnerships have been utilized to achieve efficiencies and how we fund and deliver large highway construction projects in West Virginia. We would not be celebrating this event without public-private partnerships. And that legislati le legislation, which was supported by Governor O. Ray Tomlin and passed by our legislature in 2013. I am truly thrilled that the Division of Highways can in initiate this project under the administration of Governor O. Ray Tomlin. And it is my pleasure to welcome our Chief Executive. With more than 40 years of public service, he has kept a steady hand in leading West Virginia the great state it is today. Knowing the critical role transportation plays in economic development, he has worked tirelessly to ensure the dependability and expansion of West Virginia's transportation and infrastructure for the benefits of its citizens, current and future. A true champion of transportation, it is an honor to serve him. Please join me in welcoming the 35th Governor of West Virginia, Governor Earl Ray Tomlin. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, uh, Secretary Maddox, for that kind introduction and for all that you and your team have done to support the completion of Route 35. This project has been a collaborative effort from federal, state, and local partners, and I'd like to take a moment to recognize those who have made this afternoon's groundbreaking possible. First, you've met him already, but Tom Smith, who is great to work with, with the Federal Highway Administration. You know, we're so pleased to have he working with us on a daily basis. Tom, we're, we're so glad to have you. Uh, with uh, Senator Capito, uh, Senator Manchin, uh, Delegate McKinley, <laughs> McKinley uh, Jenkins, and Moody. We're all uh, very pleased to have them. And I'll, I'll be like uh, Congressman Jenkins. Uh, I want to jump on Shelley's bad wagon and let's get that Federal Highway Trust Fund bill together. We all need that if we're going to continue our roads. <laughs> to our local uh, uh, legislative legislators who are, to, who are here today, thank you so much for all that you've done and the cooperation that you have given me during my uh, tenure as governor. To our staff and, and work crews of both the Department of Transportation and the Division of Highways, our local officials, including the county commissioners of both uh, Putnam and Mason County who are with us today, who have kept US 35 foremost in their minds and have been strong adv advocates for its completion. From the beginning, this project has taken a lot of time and a lot of effort. So thank you all for your continued commitment and hard work to ensure this milestone project becomes a reality. Today is an exciting day and a beautiful day for the people of Putton and Mason counties and our entire state. During my State of the State address back in a cold January day, I announced that the Division of Highways would include the completion of US 35 as part of its six-year plan. And this afternoon, I'm honored to be here and celebrate the start of the final stretch of this worthwhile project. As I've said time and time again, we owe it to our residents to have solid infrastructure. As governor, 
I always appreciate hearing the needs and concerns of our residents. And I know that many here in Putnam County and in Mason County and across West Virginia are concerned about the quality of our state's roads. And trust me when I say I understand their concerns. Solid infrastructure is a key component for business and industry looking to invest and operate here in West Virginia. But more importantly, it is critical to ensuring the everyday safety of our residents. While I know today's groundbreaking ceremony does not fix all the potholes and improvements needed statewide, we have invested hundreds of millions of dollars in repairs and improvements this past summer. And it's my hope that this new four lane is another step in the right direction. I know it will bring improvements to the local communities that this new stretch of highway will support for years to come. For years, Route 35 has been recognized for its promise to continue West Virginia's economic growth and bring a new element of safety to the local communities. But I know that it has suffered a lot of setbacks along the way. And I'm proud that we've been able to work together and overcome a range of issues from lack of form, uh, funding to formal project delays to bring this uh, community the solid infrastructure that it deserves. The completion of this final 14.6 mile stretch will make a difference for those who call the area home and for businesses that count on this critical east-west highway for shipments and daily work routes. Now, as we improve our infrastructure, we're also making it easier for new and existing businesses to expand as part of West Virginia's gr growing economy. We're also helping companies investing in West Virginia grows by supporting their current and future workforce. Now, this presents a great opportunity with this road as it's completed for new jobs and development in Mason and Putnam counties. But we've got to have more than that. We've got to have a good trained workforce. And we know that for businesses to be successful, they depend on a trained workforce. And we have a number of new programs and partnerships to provide the skills our workers need. Most of these are available on the new Workforce West Virginia website. It's called workforcewv.org. And I encourage all of you to visit that site to see the available training programs that we have for West Virginia businesses and their employees. Since 2007, West Virginia's community and technical colleges have developed over 133 new programs specifically tailored toward workforce development. Now, these programs are collaborative partnerships between business and industry and community co colleges across our state and are designed to equip West Virginians with the skills they need to be part of the workforce. Whether part of our state's booming natural gas industry or an advanced technology business, companies of all sizes and shapes are investing in West Virginia and our workforce by no donating hundreds of thousands of dollars to support programs to train their future workers. These programs represent successful partnerships between industry and our education system. And I hope that you've been able to see some of these benefits here in Putnam and Mason counties. Now, while we work hard to develop a skilled workforce, we also must ensure it's a drug-free workforce. This spring, we kicked off the 16th round of our regional task force meetings for the Governor's Advisory Council on Substance Abuse. And members of this task force have worked incredibly hard to help us combat our state's drug problems. Since establishing this work group, in October of 2011, more than 3,000 West Virginians have shared valuable input, and their recommendations led to a number of critical reforms, including expanding access to a product called Narcan to first responders and family members struggling with addiction, by providing funding to expand critical substance abuse treatment services in our communities throughout our state, and creating West Virginia's first ever 24-hour call center, it's called 844-HELP-FOR-WV, to provide referral support for those seeking help and substance abuse recovery services around our state. <coughs> Excuse me. So whether tackling statewide issues like workforce development and substance abuse, 
our working or, or, or working toward supporting our local communities through highway and, and improvement projects like the one we're celebrating today, these changes are helping us usher in a bright future for West Virginia. Today's project was made possible because of the innovative public-private partnership that the Secretary mentioned that I proposed back in 2013. The P3 concept both saves money by avoiding cost increases due to inflation and helps speed up construction of our highways to spur economic development in our state and in our communities. So thanks to this aggressive effort, we expect to have the majority of construction of this final stre stretch of US 35 completed by the fall of 2018 and the road ready for traffic by the fall of 2019. This project has been years in the making and I'd like to thank each of you here today for your patience and support along the way. In just a few minutes, looks like that's our ground uh, breaking place over there, we'll be breaking ground and celebrate the final piece of construction of Route 35. But before we do, I'd like to take a moment to highlight the many contributions, and it's been mentioned before, of Senator Charles Lanham and Jack Fruth, for whom this highway is named. Now, I know Jack would love to see this day, but in his honor, his daughter Lynn and Mrs. Uh, Fruth has taken up the cause and joins us today, and we're glad to have both of you here. And Senator Lanham, who I served with in the State Senate, his family and the Fruth family have been strong advocates for improving their local communities, which includes the construction of a safer US 35. I'd like to thank you both for being here today and for your co continued commitment to this cause. We appreciate it. And I'm pleased that we're finally able to make the Fruth Lanham Highway a reality. I look forward to seeing the many improvements and opportunities this highway will bring to the Mountain State now and for many years to come. And once again, thank you for having me here today. Rick, I told you I'd get it done. I'm getting it done. Thank you all. Thank you, Governor. And uh, as he mentioned, it's time to move some ceremonial dirt and an excellent opportunity for photographs as well. In a post note to the media, be sure and check in with Brent Walker, if you would, for interviews immediately following. I would like to point out, though, when you move over to the dirt pile, if you'll look through the fence on the hillside to my right, you'll see survey markers. That marks the new Route 35 on the mountainside. So. Let's go to the dirt pile. Let's do it.